Hey everybody, Scott Burnett here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Hope everybody's doing well today. So in today's video, I'm, well, let me back up just a second. Tonight for supper, I'm gonna cook one of my wife's favorite meals. And I got this recipe off of Deer Meat for Dinner's channel. It's a mango macadamia nut crusted mahi. Now, you, being from Georgia, I can't say that fast three times to save my life. So uh, I've had a, the same food processor for 15 years and uh, it finally gave up the ghost on me the other day. Uh, the internal mechanism broke on it. So for Christmas, my wife has bought me, most guys would get a new gun, a fishing rod, uh, some kind of sporting equipment. I got a food processor. so. I do the majority of the cooking and a lot of stuff I do uses a food processor. So this is a KitchenAid, let me turn it around to the English, three and a half cup food chopper. And uh, hoping this will do it. Uh, it's stainless steel, dishwasher safe, um, not a paid for video. I paid or my wife paid for this has two speeds and a pulse mode to chop, mix, and puree. Uh, it has a drizzle basin, so you can drizzle olive oil like if you're making a pesto or, or something like that, or mayonnaise. So I'm gonna open it up here. Let's, uh, let's pull down on the table here, and I'll show you what I got. So in the box, this ought to be very simple. got uh, the manual where you register it and all that stuff. That's a pretty neat looking little food processor. And for me and my wife, we don't need anything big. We don't cook big extravagant meals or anything. See how long the cord is on it. Not very long, so I'll have to get, I'll have to do it over there on the counter. So you got a chop puree. I guess that's two speeds. Got a little feet on the bottom to keep it from slipping. See how bad it is to take apart. Okay, the lid comes off, so that should be able to clean up good. Yeah, it comes apart again. May take some little doing to get this on. There it is. Okay, there it is. Ah. So you can clean up the motor area. I'll have to read if that comes apart or if you just clean it as one thing. So I'll read into that. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to go ahead and clean all this up. And I'm going to show you how to make the mango macadamia crusted mahi. Um, very simple recipe, but man, it is good. So I'll clean it up and we'll come right back. Okay, got everything cleaned up. The blade does come out of the uh, container. You just pull it straight out. Be careful with this thing. Extremely sharp. Extremely. Don't ask me how I know. So, the recipe for this, so I use um, four mahi fillets. You know, they're probably four ounces of fish each, about this long, about that wide, about that thick. Now I can't get them fresh because we don't have them in Georgia. Uh, our local grocery store has them frozen and I can't tell the difference. Uh, they must really package them good because when I cook this, it's just like if I was in Florida. So, so what we're going to have, we're going to have 
Um, one cup of panko breadcrumbs. Hopefully y'all can see that. The lighting in the kitchen is not the best. I do have another light over here and this, but it's probably jacked up. Uh, original panko. Everglades fish and chicken. That's not even showing up. Everglades fish and chicken. That is the best stuff to go on fish, chicken, seafood, pork. I mean, is out of this world. Be links in the description of what all I do. Uh, dried mango. This happens to be um, Pacific Premium Mango. And uh, just some uh, dried salted macadamia nuts. So let's go down here on the table and I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, so putting the machine back together, uh, we're gonna leave it on chop. So you have a chop and a puree. And it says it had two speeds plus a pulse. So, so what I'm gonna have to do first, and I don't really have a good way to measure this, the mango. I take about uh, four pieces. That makes two right there. Though. And the chef always has have one. So if you don't like dried mango, there's something wrong with you. Okay, so I gotta chop this up first. This is the hardest part. So let me put the lid on it. Okay, so you have to push down on your thumb right here to make it work. That has already done it a heck of a lot better than my old one did. That was only about 30 seconds. Let me do a little bit more and then I'll add some breadcrumbs so it takes some of the moisture out. All right. And as you can see, hopefully you can see, it's chopped it up pretty good. Take some of these panko, and I don't, I don't measure this. I, I know how much a cup is. That's about a cup. Chop it up. The machine is not too loud. <laughs> All right. So what you want, you want the breadcrumbs and the mango to be incorporated and you want the mango to be in little small pieces. Now the Everglades fish and chicken Well, I can't get, the lighting is just terrible right here. That's it right there. I'm gonna put in about a quarter teaspoon. That's all I'm gonna put. The fish will be salt and peppered, so. Now, as far as the macadamia pieces, I like these, they're real sweet. And one thing about it, when you start cooking these, you gotta be really careful, because they'll burn. But that's probably a couple of tablespoons of macadamia nuts. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more just. There we go. Put the lid back on and get to chopping. That's all I can hold Let me take you off the tripod and show you this. So 
So that's what it looks like in there. Very fine pieces of mango, very fine pieces of the nut and everything. But the, the sweetness of this with the, the hearty texture of the fish, man, it's something else. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the fish, I'm gonna coat it in an egg mixture, coat one side with this, and then just pan fry it. It takes three or four minutes per side on a medium, medium, medium high heat. Um, good, cook that with some uh, broiled, what I do is steam some broccoli, put it in the, in the oven, let it broil, olive oil, salt, and pepper. Have that together, can't beat it. So I'll bring you back when I coat the fish. All right, so we're back. We got our mahi fillets, get up very close to you. So we got four pieces of fish, and I lightly salt and pepper. I mean, just very light. Don't take much. This is this fish is so good, you don't need it. So we're gonna come down here on the table, and we're gonna put this together. All right. So I've got one egg. And I'm going to beat it up. This is going to coat our fillets so the uh, breadcrumb mixture will stick to them. All right. We'll take the breadcrumb mixture. Put it on a plate. That thing comes apart a whole lot better than my other one did too. All right, so let's do this. Let me get one more thing here. So one of the things you got to do when you coat fish like this or, or anything, if you're, um, making deer meat or tenderloin or anything, anything you coat with a flour or breadcrumbs or anything like that, you need to let it dry. Cause if you don't, it'll just fall off. So y'all can see how pretty that is. I hope you can see it. That is so, that looks a whole lot better than it normally does. So I'm gonna coat the fish and it's thawed out. I thawed it out per the packaging. I'm going to take it here and we're just going to coat one side of it. And then I'm going to put it on the cutting board. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to let it sit for a while and let it dry on there. And one thing I am going to do different, I generally pan fry, pan fry this. I'm going to do this in the oven. So on the, the uh, breadcrumb package showed a recipe for parmesan coated fish and they did it in the oven so i'm gonna try it in the oven tonight it says i'll take on a normal fish 14 15 minutes this might take closer to 20 because it's a little thicker it's a little hardier fish That is some good stuff. All right. If you got any holes that you miss, you can take, take some, sprinkle it on there. And this is what you got. And I hope y'all can see that. The lighting in here is poor. So, all right, I'm gonna let this dry. We'll put it in this sheet pan that I have lined with foil. I'll put a little nonstick spray on it and let it go for about 20 minutes. Um, 
see what it looks like and I'll bring you back. All right, so I got my aluminum foil, aluminum foil. I'm gonna take some of this olive oil spray. God, you can't see in there. Olive oil spray. Just spray this real good so it doesn't stick. And I've been letting these dry for about 10 minutes. I didn't have my other light on, that's why it was really dark over here. So I'm gonna take this and just place it on the aluminum foil. And this is gonna go into a 400 degree oven. I'm hoping for about 20 minutes. So that's what we got. 20 minutes, I'll be right back. Okay, so that was awful loud. Okay, 25 minutes in the oven at 400 degrees. If I can pick the pan up because it's still really hot. I got that right there. Four perfectly cooked fillets. And what I did, I took a steamer pack of broccoli florets. I steamed them for four minutes in the, in the microwave, put them on a piece of parchment, salt and pepper, a little olive oil, 15 minutes in the oven. It just makes the broccoli so much better. Let me plate it up and I'll show you. All right, so here you have it. Hopefully y'all can see that. Perfectly cooked mahi, mango macadamia crusted, rolled broccoli, steamed and broiled uh it's gonna be great if y'all like this video give me a thumbs up hit that little subscribe button everything will be in the description my recipe the ingredients uh the little food chopper that i used worked great love it uh, i really enjoy cooking i mean i am not a professional don't even claim to be but you by the size of me you can tell i like to eat so so anyway, we're going to enjoy this, waiting on Tanya to get home. And um, until the next video, thanks for watching.